loving what you're hearing? Well, the establishment hates it. And right now, they're conjuring up new ways to try and censor RCR. To ensure you never miss a beat of the hard-hitting news you've come to know and love, make sure you're on the RCR mailing list. Get connected now at realitycheck.radio forward slash email. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what they think about the increasingly strident warmongering against everybody but Maori that is coming from the Maori Party. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go, so let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. Good to have you back. Hi, Cam. How's things? Yeah, pretty good, apart from all the shenanigans going on with the Maori Party, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about. What do you think about all these <laughs> threats and intimidation? And, and, uh, and of course, we've got the, the protests happening today, um, you know, in the streets, blocking everybody on the motorways, all that sort of stuff, all because they don't agree with some policies that our democratically elected government have made. Well, well, they've been rumbling on about this over quite a period of time. You know, it's been a steady build-up, um, and I'm talking over years. I have noticed it creeping in more and more. Um, I think the activists at the top are serious, um, and one of them stood up in Parliament. I, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. Um, stood up in Parliament and said that they would never stop. Um, and that by 2040, they they wanted complete sovereignty. So <clears throat> that wasn't just yesterday. And the language really says it all. Um, and it's with the daily help of the MSM, who, of course, are funded until 2026 to promote anti-colonisation theories, stoke the fire, to promote Maori capture of the Treaty of Waitangi, and they encourage the victimhood of Maori on a daily basis, uh, the victimhood at the hands of the so-called Pākehās. They're pushing Maori language on a daily basis more and more until really it's difficult to even read an article. So the MSM are really hand in hand with them. I remember years ago Donald Trump um, was castigated for saying the mainstream media are the enemy of the people. Yeah, well, they are. Well, they are, and they have a huge influence on stoking violence. Um and, you know, having said this, I'd like to say the Maori people I know are actually happy to stay in a westernised society and are very non-violent, but <clears throat> these Maori party MPs are not. They're inciting violence all the way and they want the takeover of Maori authority and sovereignty. That's what they want. And Waititi said, um, we want to be in control total control, as a matter of fact, of our sovereignty by 2040. And he stood up in Parliament and said that, and he said, we continue to fight forever and ever and ever, and we never ceded sovereignty. So, you know, this is fighting talk. And then we've had <clears throat> this person recently, uh, Ms. Carper Kingy, and she said... We're the only party that will fight ruthlessly for Te Iwi Māori to the death. And she wants yep. to rewind to a time back in 1840, she said, <clears throat> when apparently everything was ideal. And, and wonderful. Uh, Pake, and wonderful. Yes, Pākehā hands would not dare touch our babies then, she said. Well, I think she's got a bit of an idealised... Uh, image of that. Um, well, it's heroic, really. And, uh, you know, it, it's just ridiculous, um, the situation. But, but is, you know, the me you, you raised the point about the media. I'll give you an example. Tuesday um, afternoon, late afternoon, News Hub put out a uh, an article, and in the article it says, and I quote, for those wanting to participate down south, and then gives them details about where they can go and get information about the protest. Is it an article mm. or is it a straight-up promotion? Well, I'd suggest it's a straight-up promotion and they're in on it. Oh, 
It's absolute propaganda of the worst sort, and, and it's been going on for quite a while. And while it's easy to say, um, you know, the the um, money that they get has kind of tempted them to go that way, but they're that way anyway. Um, I just don't know what has happened to the world, really, because they just stoke this fire of um, dissatisfaction, really. And then it just builds and builds and builds. And the young people in particular pick, pick up on it, and they think they are victims, you know. Um, <clears throat> so they, they will get out there and fight, because when they're young, they're pretty stupid. And, you know, just like we were silly when we were young, they're silly too. And it's not like, uh, you know, way back when I was sort of alongside of Maori people. It's, it's a totally different society now. I don't think it's very good. Um, and we've got um, 16% of New Zealand population are Maori, but 70% of children in care are Maori. Well, this is what gets and, me, right, um, is they t- talk about 16% of the population are Maori. There is no one in New Zealand with 100% Maori DNA. There isn't. There just isn't. So the people no, who are saying not. this is these are my people are denying the other side or the other sides or the multiple sides of the DNA that exists in them that maybe come from intermarriage or um, you know cohabitation over the years. And there's this um, this you know prevalence amongst Maori activists that you have just a mere smidge of Maori DNA in you and that is just takes precedent over everything else and that if you deny that one sixteenth or one thirty second or one sixty fourth or or some microscopic amount of DNA mm. that comes from Maori, that if you're denying that person that DNA uh, or that that right to their culture. It's their culture that takes precedence, not anybody else's culture. They may be, you know, fifty percent Irish, or or um, in the case of Willie Jackson, have more Jewish Jewish ancestry in his DNA than he does Maori. But but he's the one telling us that he's more Maori than than Karen Shaw, you know, for example. Yeah, it's just it, a ridiculous yes, but you know construct. Why that is. Yeah, you know why that is, though, don't you? Yeah, you tell me. It's because that's a pathway to um, fiscal riches. Yeah. That, that's why it is. There's no other reason at all. Um, and, you know, what I'm going to say now is a bit um, inflammatory, but I don't mean it to be. I'm only talking to these uh, militant uh, creeps at the top. Um, if the if the Maori lifestyle was so absolutely superior in every way, and colonisation ruined it, why doesn't the Maori Party go back to their desired 1840, give up all colonisation trappings, and live that wonderful indigenous lifestyle? Because they're actually free to do it in New Zealand. They've got um, land that's been given to them. It's really uh, suitable land, you can go and live out in the bush and give everything up and live that wonderful life. Why mm. don't they do that? Well, I mean, let's just analyse it. The average age expectancy of Maori before Europeans arrived here was something like 35, at best 45, right? It's now, mm. it's now well into the 70, you know, 70, 75%. So, you know, was that great? Was that cool? They lived in in squalid little huts with with dirt floors. There's no wooden floors. There was no windows. There was nothing. No glass. No <clears> metal. No ability to boil water. No wheel. Right. Uh, they fought with wood, clubs, uh, wooden you know, um, you know edged weapons with sharpened wood. So you know they wouldn't last very long. Yes, of course they had stone type uh, weapons and tools. Uh, but no metal or anything. And the time that they arrived in New Zealand was about the time also that uh, the Vikings were conquering various different European nations, uh, including a large chunk of uh, of the um, of Great Britain, all of Ireland, uh, Iceland, uh, all the way out exploring to Greenland uh, and North America. Um, and they had metal weapons and pots and you know livestock and all of those sorts of things. If we're comparing apples with apples here. It's not the same, mm. you know, and 
Th- no. To sit there and say, yeah, we reject colonialism, that we want to go back to the way it was, that everything was cool, is just ridiculous. Just a ridiculous construct that everything was was bad. You know, Monty Python had a had a a a skit, you know, um, from Life of Brian, where they're sitting there as the 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 People's Liber- Liberation Front of Palestine, complaining about what the Romans had ever done for us. And, you know, they're saying, "Well, what have the Romans ever done for us?" And somebody pipes in and says, "Well, there's the aqueducts." And this is what Maori are doing now. <laughs> These Maori activists are saying, "What have the what have the British ever done for us?" Well, well, there's roads, there's hospitals, there's schools, there's education. Most importantly, there's laws and law and order. Uh, that's what the treaty brought to to New Zealand. But, but now they want to reject that. Some, yes, it also brought something out else to them, um, and that was the wake up of. Uh, some Maori people who caught on pretty pretty fast that um, actually the colonised way of life was something quite attractive and they learnt that they did not have to uh, stick in a tribe and live by tri- tribalism. They um, could see suddenly, well, hey, I can earn something. I can actually have my own house, my very yeah. own. Now, that's pretty pretty drastic thing compared to living in... Uh, tribalism, and they got out there and they thought, well, how do I do this? Well, um, I have to have some money. So that's why they gravitated to quite well-paid jobs like in the freezing works and all those sort of things, um, and earned some money and bought a house. And then they realised they could actually raise their own family in that house, and it was a really superior lifestyle to what they had. But, you know, these activists, they're trying to make out that uh, the Pākehās impose their um, lifestyle onto the Maori, but it was actually yeah. the other way round, as, as well, I recall. What, what they're wanting is a return to tribalism and everything that's bad that that goes along with that. And I think that's something that we need to oppose. And it's not racist to say, no, we, this is where society is now, and you fit in or, or go away. Um, you know, it's oh, ridic- no. it it's a- ridiculous the situation that, that they're they're bringing to this. You know, talk of genocide and stealing languages. No one stole their language; they just chose not to use it. You know, the, oh, do, you don't hear Italians complaining that Latin was stolen from them, do you? It's just ridiculous. No, and I've had Gaelic stolen from me, so you know, I'm sad and flat. That's a terrible thing. No, I know. I'm the same. I've had it stolen from yes. me too. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll tell you what: if they want to want to go back to that lifestyle, there's a place not that far from here, about an hour and a half away, in a car, and it's called um, Cannibal Gorge. They, well, we can't How talk did that, about that happen? No, we can't talk about that. We We're can't talk to. about that. But I'm just yeah. talking about geography and the name of the place. Yeah. That's what it's called. So, um, Obviously, you know, there were some tasty the morsels soul, available there. Oh, they're bloody terrible anyway. But look, um, I know that the listeners would like to um, hear a funny little thing again, a funny sentence. Okay. Wouldn't they? Yep, just we before you go, one? that'll be perfect. Um, yeah, we've got a good one here. We've got um, the Maori Health Authority, which is disbanded, isn't it? Yeah. But anyway... Um, Online, they've got a Maori Health Authority-funded thing called Healthline New Zealand, which is online, Mm. and they state, quote, our goal is to deliver the highest calibre content that provides a sense of clarity and inspires healthy actions for our readers along their health and well-being journeys, journeys. And their very first article is, does picking your nose increase your risk of dementia? Well, now, this is a fact. This well, is a fact. And and this rubbish is where the Maori health funding went. Yeah. Picking your nose causes dementia. All right. Okay, Lindley, <laughs> thanks for, for, for a fabulous chat as usual. I'm sure we'll get lots of feedback on, on your comments there. And uh, we'll talk again next week. <laughs> thanks, Cam. See you Thank later. You, bye. Bye-bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. Good to have you back. Thank you, Cam. Good to be back. Now, um, I wanted to talk to you today about about the disruption 
that the Maori Party has caused today on Budget Day uh, in the streets with protests going on strike, uh, you know, using inflammatory terms like genocide and revolution and overthrowing the government and uh, all of those sorts of things. What your thoughts are on that? I think that um, we keep forgetting it's not what can the country do for you, what can the government do for you, or what can your fellow taxpayers do for you with their taxes. It's what can you do for your country. Um, and, and look, I think many of these people are pathetic. So if Maori want extra things in some form of racial bias so that because of the colour of their skin, they should be getting an easier track to owning a home, better education, um, less likely to be punished if they commit a crime, um, why, what is that about? Why, why wouldn't we all want to work out what we can do better for the country so that the country is a better place for everyone to live in in the future, rather than saying, what can the people who pay tax give us for free so that we can have our children who are born mostly out of wedlock and no fathers, um, what can we get the government to give them for free so that they can maintain a lifestyle of being less effective than they could be? Well, totally. But but if you look at some of the things that they're saying as well, like you, you, this, this clown, Rawari Waititi, who, who said on Tuesday that there's been strikes in New Zealand for years, including before employment agreement processes were implemented, who said only one person gets to determine what a strike is? Strikes are controlled by legislation. You've been an employer of large numbers of staff. You can't just willy-nilly declare a strike. And, but what he's saying is, I want to, I want to declare a strike, that I uh, have more say than anybody else, and, and all the Maori that are out there that agree with me will all go on strike as well, and we don't care what the law is. But in the same breath, He's insisting that the treaty be honoured um, at the same time as he's breaching the treaty himself. Yes, but the reason they have rules on strikes is what you want to do is have an effective message being given to people if there's a problem. No, but not um, like, not a, 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 we're not being silly as far as um, Maori are already if you have a medical condition, Maori get to be ahead of other races on the waiting list. If you need to get some sort of form of vaccination, they had um, flu jabs for Maori if they were 55, other people if they were 60. Um, and then they're saying in any um, school, if you're looking at an ERO report, they want to know what are you doing specifically for your Maori students? But there's already tons of things that are happening in our society that are putting a special effort into making it better for Maori. But in, as soon as you single one group out to have special conditions, then they somehow, the slack is taken up and they become less effective. I found if you wanted to, um, if you want to damage someone, give them free stuff, and then they expect it and they become useless at earning and foraging for, for the correct stuff. Yeah, one of the activists, so, Yeru, in, sorry, carry on. So, so I just look at them thinking, here's these activists saying, we want better homes for our children. Well, why don't you go out there and earn more money? We want better education for our children. Well, why don't you see that they go to school every day? We want less prisons we want a population in prison that's more relevant to their, our population ratios with the community. Well, teach your kids to have less crime. I mean, these things are cause and effect, and I still put it down to absent fathers. And so if the fathers would step up, then a whole lot of things happen better for everybody. Like in the day when I was a youngster, I didn't actually know that... The, the the Maori or Pacifica kids weren't the same as the European kids. It didn't, it, I didn't know. People at their house used to say, what colour are their hair? 
And I said, oh, no, black? No. Oh. I didn't even know that they were different. I thought we were all just people and New Zealanders. And having everyone saying, oh, we've got to do extra for this group of people and let's have everybody go on strike on a particular day from that race, you're thinking you're 2.5% of the vote and you think that you can actually swing a big axe? You're swinging a toothpick, man. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know, uh, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you mentioned about you know what the government can do for for people or what what they uh, what they can provide. The the flip side of that is what this you know organisation Toitu Tuturiti, is, is run by Eru Kapa King, um, is saying what this government is doing to Maori on a daily basis is much worse. Well, let's have a look at the vote Maori and see how many billions of dollars that they're giving to Maori. You have to wonder. What what sort of you – know, do these people need to see spec savers or something? Because they're not seeing what I'm seeing. Well, also, when people say it's unfair, you're unfairly treating Maori, why don't Maori go into business and then have other Maori go and support their business as customers and then the Maori make all the profit and then the, the Maori will then enjoy the fruits of their labour – why is it that if a white man's in business, he has to give something to Maori? But if a Maori, is, there's nothing preventing Maori from being the employer. There's nothing preventing Maori in New Zealand from doing all the things that they want governments to give them so that they can be equal to other races who are getting things done. Like if you look at Japanese people, they get the bomb dropped on them. They smoke like you've never seen before. They live long and prosper. And why? Because they work hard and they have family values. And so when you look at these people that are saying, we have to give this to Maori, why? Why, why, don't, why aren't they going out and getting it for themselves? And whenever they talk about the, the government has to do this, what they really mean is white males who are the net contributors of tax and one of the few groups that are, because... Maori in general are net recipients, not net contributors. So what they're saying is let's go on strike because the white people's taxpayers haven't given enough of their tax to support us yet. Well, that's what it seems to seems to be, isn't? You know, that's exactly, or well, that is what it seems to be. That um, that 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 expecting Europeans or everybody else actually. Uh, to pay for a lifestyle in a world that they're rejecting um, with every breath that they take, yes. I don't, I don't get and it. I say we don't, we don't support um, King's birthday celebration because we don't think that the European king has sovereignty over us, and so we're going to do what we're going to do, except on benefit day. <laughs> yeah. On benefit day, please, can we have some of the money that you've taxed the other folk other than Maori? To be net gain from, and look, the, the the Maori staff that I've had that have worked for me, the Maori bosses that I've had that have worked with me, they've been fantastic people. So the average Maori that you talk to isn't full of this nonsense. It's just somehow this elite class think that they can get into Parliament and we're going to show you because they're going to be a good in everything. They're going to get into Parliament the, that, that colonialism brought to New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. <laughs> right. And pays their salary. <laughs> I mean, when the guys have worked with me on the job, we laughed together, we dug holes together, we dug trenches together, we filled them in, we laid cable, we went and had a beer together afterwards because we'd done a, a hard day's work and had a lot of laughs. There was nothing to do with whom was who. It was to do with we're working hard, we're making money, and we're having fun. And now we've got people saying, oh, yeah, but colonialism, look what it did to you. Our Maori people have a poor diet, and as such, they live a few years shorter than the Europeans. Having said that, they live twice as long as they used to under their own steam. And then they're saying things like, our Maori people, we have to have go on strike because um, they're not getting a fair go as far as the money that they're receiving from the government that they don't wish to um, honour. It's all, it's just hard to believe. That's what Miles was saying. He's saying that what the Maori Party is doing is they're saying, 
They want to abrogate the treaty and go back to total sovereignty of Maori in New Zealand and ignore everything that happened post-1840. He said, they're the ones who are breaching the treaty. Nobody else. Them. I, th- I think there's some merit in that argument. Mm. Well, I think there's a lot of merit in that argument. But also, you've got, you've got a group of people that were like a Stone Age civilization that didn't even have the wheels. Mm. Now they want to use all the infrastructure to go on the roads that have been made by, who was it? The Romans, I think, invented the roads. But what did yep. they do for mankind, as you say? <laughs> what did they but, ever do um, for us? Yes, we want to go on those roads and cause strike and, and chaos when the pre-settlement um, or whatever culture, before um, the, the Europeans came and did a terrible job of colonizing, colonizing them so they could live twice as long, but they were eating one another. And, and that, that was a type of thing, and some of the, the um, natural resources of New Zealand became extinct under their watch. And so they're saying, yeah, we've got it all right. Um, it's everybody else's fault, so we can blame you. Yeah. And, you know, they say enough is enough. I think most New Zealanders are sitting here th- looking at these clowns with their funny hats sitting in Parliament. Uh, you know, somebody's had a Sharpie attack them on the face and they're saying, no, no, actually we've had enough. We- we've had enough of this mm. nonsense. And I think they won't get what they wish for. I think they'll get the opposite of what they wish for. And also, if you would just let's see what the budget brings. Let's just like going on strike. <laughs> exactly. The same day that the budget's released today, you just look and you think, but it might have had a lot of good things in there for you. <laughs> Go figure. And I think um, Payne Jones is actually coming to the fore as as Winston, saying we've had enough of everybody bitching and moaning about things that aren't going right, let's all get out and have, have a go. Good days work, good days play, all the happily ever after. Isn't that what every... That's that's the egalitarian society that we all want in New Zealand where Jack's as good as his master and we all have a, yeah. a, have a fair suck of the salve, right? That's what we all want. Yeah, New Zealand is mm. a pretty fair-minded. What we're seeing here is a very, very, very small group of people who are not that eloquent, have uh, irrational arguments uh, trying to tell us that they know best. Well, you know, we're Ooh. allowed in a free democracy to say, no, you don't know best and here's why. And they don't like that. They call that racism and try and shout us down. But I know that you and and uh, myself are not ones to be told what we can and can't say. Exactly. And All right, Paul, I better go on to uh, Jack. Here. Sorry. Okay. Take care. You have a good one, and we'll talk next week. Yeah, Jack's waiting, so I, I, I better, you know, how cantankerous Jack can be, so I better go, go to him. Indeed. And I'll talk next week. Okay. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jack. Fantastic to have you back. Oh, thanks, Cam. Nice to hear your voice. Wow, you were, you were gallivanting around Australia last week, weren't you? Oh, I was on an aviation course in Melbourne. Oh, was it at the airport? Um, at Moravan, which is one of the four airports oh, around yes. there. Yes, I, I lived in Melbourne for a couple of years, so I know exactly where you're talking about. Yep. I don't suppose Excellent. you would have he- heard any uh, New Zealand news about the carrying on uh, over there by the Maori Party, et cetera. Uh, it would have been quite a pleasant um, break being in Australia and not having to listen to all that nonsense. Mm. Well, funny enough, um, I still tuned into Her Majesty's um, New Zealand Herald every day, wherever I am in the world, I still keep up. Um, but you think we've got problems with Australia. they got the Middle Eastern problem. You would have heard about the um, cake-making place in Sydney that made, made the cupcakes for featuring ISIS warriors on the top and selling them a, a three-year-old birthday party. Um, they had the, the three-year-old dressed up as a, an ISIS warrior and they're dishing out all these cakes to everybody. So they've got worse problems than us. Oh, I'm sure they do have worse problems than us, but, you know, we've still got the same sort of problem here, not just perhaps not to the same extent. Anyway, this week what I wanted I to talk that, about was I, the nonsense that, that uh, the Maori Party is carrying on with strikes and holding up traffic, all protesting a budget that they haven't heard yet. 
I think, I don't know, but I think that most people are just sick to death of uh, those Maori people in Parliament, painted face in particular. Uh, most Maori I know are hardworking people that just want to get on with their life and have a, you know, a good life. And the Christians like him that do illegal things like inciting racism and illegal acts, and yet he gets away with it. That's what I can't understand. Well, you know, talking about strikes and calling on strikes, individuals to go on strike um, is illegal. It's actually against the law. But, but you know, they don't it think is. the law applies to him. They insist that everybody else follows the law when it comes to making payments under the treaty. They want, they want all of that. But when it suits them, we don't want to follow the law. Can I ask a question? If we become a republic, does that mean that the treaty would have to go? Well, this is the problem. You know, theoretically, Maori would fight ha- um, having a republic because it would remove uh, the crown. The gravy as- frame. Yeah, as a as a party to the treaty, I won't say partner because it's not a partnership. It was just, it's as clear as clear in both Maori and in English that Maori cede in sovereignty forever. It's what it says, um, and they're they're, they're yep. saying they never ceded so- sovereignty. Well, tough, you did exactly. So uh, I like that word tough. Why doesn't someone get tough on these guys? Well, because people are scared. Like Christopher Luxon's wetter than an otter's pocket, you know, and so he doesn't want to upset anybody in case they get upset and and have a harker and, you know, bear their backside at him. Um, He's one of those, you know, people who wants uh, everyone to love him but doesn't actually have the uh, nous to realise that not everyone will love you, and so he gets upset about it. Well, I can tell you, for one, I don't love him and never will. (laughs) I mean, yeah. talk about weasel words. Tell me something he's actually done since he's got in Parliament or got become the leader. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't think of one thing he's done. You've actually made me lost for words, and that's a very rare thing. Yeah, but we're getting off track. Anyway, my thoughts are lock that painted face up for life. Put him in jail. Never let him out. Send a lesson to them. Shut up. Just get on. Carry on. You do something constructive instead of always being negative Nelly. Um, you know, just... What has he done? Tell me what he's actually done while he's being handsomely paid in Parliament. How long has he been in there and what has he done? Well, he wore a silly hat. Yeah, not even a New Zealand hat. Borrowed it from Texas. Yeah. What's that all about? Well, and then he had the silly feather hat as well, remember? Oh, what was that? Yeah, on the opening of Parliament he wore this, you know, Feather hat. Apparently, it's it's a Maori thing. I've never seen it in all the oh, paintings okay. of Goldie, in all of the pictures um, of artists. You know, back in the day, there was never any pictures of, of Maori with silly hats on. Never. There's if, no, he could there, be mag- if he could be magically transported back to 1839, I think uh, the Maori would kill him. He'd be gone. Probably. It, or, or or he'd be. Um, Taken as a slave or something like that, you know, by someone who's stronger. Yes, exactly. I mean, don't forget that that's why they called on the British government to help them because they were being massacred by their own people. And they said, please help us. We'll do whatever you like, but we want to join you guys because you've got some semblance of law and order. It, well, that was the entire premise of the treaty to bring law and order to New Zealand. And exactly. in order to do that, you have to cede sovereignty. Otherwise, who's in charge? Because if if they didn't cede sovereignty, who was in charge? Exactly. Right? Well, it wasn't Maori, was it? It was the government. So they must have ceded sovereignty. Well, they were, they were all fighting amongst themselves. They couldn't stop. I'm not sure we're going to ever solve this problem, Jack, but we can sure as hell have a good fun time discussing it. One thing to remember, though, is how I opened. Our problems aren't as bad as Australia's. Yeah, they're different kinds of problems, aren't they? They are. They're still problems. Yeah, problems nonetheless. Anyway, Jack, I yeah. better go. Got another caller waiting, and we'll talk again next week. See you later. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. Good to have you back. G'day, Cameron. You're well? <laughs> Always well, mate. You know the answer to that. <laughs> Now, what do you got for me this week, mate? Is a lot been happening? Well, you know, Monday we had um, we had uh, the Maori Party who put up some uh, 
awful uh, images on social media and also an Instagram post by uh, Rari Waititi's wife uh, and, and who is also John Tamahiri's daughter where they're talking about um, taking control of the government, um, taking over the government, usurping power. Uh, the imagery had uh, pistols uh, and burning and uh, all of the Maori Party MPs who retweeted it or, or spread it around were putting burning emblems uh, you know, emojis on their on their social media tweets. And, of course, on Tuesday, Rari Waititi announced that they weren't going to have hikoi's, they were going to have car koi's, uh, where they were going to drive cars extremely slowly on motorways and block uh, on-ramps and off-ramps all for Thursday. Um, that's what they said. They were going to do this on Thursday to pr- protest a budget that they haven't seen or heard of. Um, and, of course, um, we've got a whole bunch of of these protesters out there now um, have blocked roads and caused all sorts of carnage and mayhem, all because they oppose the policies of a democratically elected government. And I'm just interested what you think about that. Well, I'm just glad the protests this morning were a flop. No one cares. All it did is piss people off. If you're going to block people trying to earn money to feed their families, you're just going to lose more support. Using guns and imagery for a political party is a massive red flag, and I cannot believe that the media won't call them out on it. ACT get called out for supporting legal, safe gun ownership. They get called out for saying they're going to get more people killed. Yet here we have a party using actual guns and slogans, and they don't get questioned about it at all. It's a disgrace. I can't believe it. Total disgrace. So, yeah, it's a, a double standard. A flop. There's a double standard, isn't there? Absolute double standard. Uh, from it's a massive double standard, mate, and and the exaggeration saying that they're trying to like cancel marries. I mean, it's insane. JT's daughter looked unhinged. Well, do, do you remember? Mad. Do you remember when David Seymour said that um, Guy Fawkes was the only person who entered Parliament with honourable <laughs> intentions, right? And they and the media screamed, "He's trying to blow up Parliament. He wants to blow up things." Blah blah blah. Yeah, here, yeah. Here you've got um, uh, JT's daughter. Uh, making unhinged statements about uh, taking control. Uh, Enough is enough. We're not tolerating this anymore. We're going to take control of the government. We never ceded sovereignty. We're going to take our own sovereignty and we're going to supersede all the colonialist things that are in place and we're going to take control and this is our country and you can all go hang. Not a peak. Yeah, but... no one actually asked these idiots how they'd actually propose to do it. Like, okay, go ahead, do what you're going to do. What are you going to do? Like, build another government? How's she going to get the taxes? Like, like how, how's it actually going to work without the main government supporting it? It's well, I think insane. They want, it's literally I think, yeah, extremist. I think, I think they want colonial taxes. They're, they're very they, – they love that aspect of Of course they do. They're just a bunch of woke communists, and they're using mar- married – Married him as a vehicle, and I, I, it's it's terrible, eh, to be honest. These, well, you know, it's just this it's was encouraged terrible. by. Most, remember, it, most most of the government we have at the moment is the biggest percentage of Maori we've ever had. Hmm. The deputy prime minister, both they're not Maori. the right, they're not the right sort of Maori, though. And that's so that's the problem. Yeah. They don't really care unless it's a type. Like it's impossible to satisfy these unhinged nutters. And I hope that people are watching these people because this is going to potentially create really dangerous condition for our country. You know, real divisive, ugly situation that's basically unnecessary because, you know, race relations and that have been getting better for the last, you know, 100, 200 years. And yet we seem to be going to a period where we're going backwards. Well, they, 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 and, they use statements yeah. like, you know, um, the government is committing genocide on Maori. They're talking about uh, the government stole our language. Well, if the government stole the language, I don't know one thing about governments. They're very good at archiving things. There's, are they suggesting there's an archive of Maori language somewhere that, that was stolen? I mean, this is the, the lunacy of their arguments where they're using emotive, highly emotive terms and, and increasingly more violent terms where they're talking about this is a revolution, you know, pictures of guns burning things. Revolutions are never bloodless. Right? It very yeah, wearing Che Guevara's hat. Well, exactly. You know, just it's but just insane. I think, and both sides can admit that atrocities did take place in 
Of course the, they did. Know, it's historical uh, facts. Nineteenth century. Hmm. And, but it, it was just a thing that happened back then. It was horrendous stuff happened all over the world. Terrible. We can't yep. reverse time. We just got to go forward together somehow. And these people aren't willing to. For a start, they won't propose a way to go forward that's not lunatic, right? So well, I, I don't know what you do about it. I, I have no idea why the media gives these people airtime. It's insane. I think they're in on it. I think it's just because it's anti-government and they're anti-government, this government in particular. And I think they're just doing it because they can. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't create harmony in society as a result. It certainly isn't doing that. You know, people will probably write in and complain that I'm being racist or, well, I'm just talking about the, the situation. We have a bunch of people who don't believe in democracy. You know, uh, Debbie Packer has said that, you know, it's outrageous that the government is going to bring in referenda uh, for voters to say whether yes or no, whether they want Maori wards. And that's appalling and we need to oppose that. So we've got the, the co-leader of the Maori party on record as saying she doesn't believe in democracy. And that's apparently okay. No, she would only like democracy if she gets got the outcome she wanted, Kim. Well, that's right. But they don't believe in democracy. They don't want people having a say. They don't want... No, no, they're, they're commies. They're commies. Yeah. They would love to be the dictators in a communist Maori state, but it's just not going to happen. Because there's no, exactly. too many good normal Maori oppose it as well. You know, it's, it's, it's utter insanity. The sooner those two current co-leaders are gone, the previous Maori co-leaders, Peter and Tariana, were, were amazing and accepted the reality. Yeah, Peter, Peter and Sharples and Tariana done. Turia acted with integrity and honesty. Big time. You know, Big I've got, I've got nothing but praise for Tariana Turia. You know, she was part of the Labour Party. Uh, she didn't agree with uh, Helen Clark and the foreshore and seabed legislation, so she said, well, I'm going to resign. I'm going to resign from Parliament, I'm going to hold a by-election, and I'm going to win. And she did. Uh, that's a person of integrity. She didn't principles. party hop. Pr principles. Yeah, she's got principles. Um, I might not agree 100% with her on that, well, but, I, but I admire anybody who has principles and, and does what she says she's going to do, and she did, and she acted with integrity and honesty, uh, it, in all aspects of her life in Parliament, and so did Peter Sharples. Uh, that's why John Key worked with them. But this lot, you can't work with them. No, and I think that's a good thing for the right side of the House because whenever you, anyone ever votes for the Labour Party again, you're going to get the Māori Party and the Green Party with unhinged Schwabra, um as, a, as a, a side plate with them, which is a massive problem for Labour. Total you problem know? for Labour. Right. Like, and, and that's why Chippy's still there, because no one else wants to lead because of this problem. Yep. So, yeah, to be fair, <laughs> as long as they never get actually get into power, imagine the carnage if they did. They just Imagine the Greens, the Māori Party and Labour sitting in the cabinet room trying to make... I can imagine the carnage. It'd be just awful. It would, well, it'd be pretty funny viewing, except for the carnage for the country, but yeah. <laughs> imagine that... Imagine the extremists sitting in cabinet. Oh, mate, it'd be terrible. Yeah. Anyway, that's all we've got time so, for today, Jimmy. So thanks for your contribution, and we'll talk again next week. Thanks, Cam. Cheers, mate. See you, mate. Bye. You know, if a white nationalist had said the things that the Maori Party is saying, you can be assured that the SIS and the police would be kicking in their doors. We'd also not hear the end of it from Kate Hanna and Byron Clark from the Disinformation Project. Strangely, they and the Human Rights Commission are suddenly very silent. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's Buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you, so connect with us today.